Anybody excited to be outdoors and doing service today? Here's the good news. We don't have to be outdoors. We get to be. Woohoo! I know the sound team, as we were setting up this morning, it was like we did this week in and week out all 2020 for the entire summer. And uh, we had a good time doing it, but it was sure nice to go back inside. Now we get to be outside. And uh, I can't imagine a more beautiful sanctuary. Amen. And so we're glad that you are here this morning. The great news is for us, we are not uh, confined to online capability this morning, so I can do whatever I want. Uh, but for those that are watching online later, we want to welcome you to service as well. We want to welcome our New Life friends. We're so honored to have been invited uh, to be out here uh, this morning and worshiping a part of this celebration uh, weekend. And unfortunately, yesterday the weather didn't hold out as well as we would have liked uh, for the activities, but we're going to more than make up for it today. Amen? And so uh, if you're a guest this morning, we want to welcome you. We're so glad uh, that you are here. Uh, now, just uh, let you know what's taking place. We're doing service, of course, outside. That's what you're here for, in case you forgot. You're here for service. And then afterwards, uh, mission team is going to be putting on uh, a meal, and so please stick around for that. Please enjoy that time uh, of fellowship and connectivity. And then also, kids are welcome to go play on the bounce houses. They're welcome to go have fun uh, over there. And then at any point after service today, you could go to the uh, east, excuse me, west doors right here uh, for New Life, and there will be people there that will be willing to give you tours of the facility. And we want to encourage you to do that, to find out more about the life-changing ministry that takes place uh, here at New Life uh, Treatment Center. So we are excited uh, to be here in, in support, of course, today of them. Uh, and then just a, a quick deacon reminder, if uh, you are a part of the Woodstock community family and uh, you plan on giving this morning, there's going to be a blue the blue ties and offering box will be uh, by the food garage, which, by the way, food will be served out of this garage just straight ahead. So please, after service, uh, make your way and, and enjoy that. Okay, a couple announcements uh, for you all. We have a, a, a fun-packed uh, summer for uh, you all, and, uh, and please make sure to invite guests to come and join you. But we have our carnival coming up in, in a little over two and a half weeks. That'll be on the, the church grounds, and we have a lot of incredible new things uh, this year, some surprises. KD Radio has said they'd like to come be a part of our uh, festivities, so they're going to be broadcasting live that evening. Uh, a number of new games, interactive games, and, and uh, so please bring the whole family. There is something for everybody, including you adults, especially you guys that like to throw axes. We have a whole axe range for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. So get excited about that. Uh, and and uh, come. we do need the donations, however, of two leaders. Uh, so if you would pre please start bringing two leaders to the church, uh, that's a part of the game. Everything's free, uh, including those, those, those two leaders. So please, please, please donate and help with that. Uh, then next week is Father's Day. Everybody say Father's Day. Very good. And so uh, that is our, our outreach service as well, our Father's Day food truck frenzy. Uh, we have a baptism next week. We have a baptism today. Uh, and, uh, and then, of course, dads, you get to eat for free. New Life friends, you get to eat for free uh, next week out on the parking lot. So service will be indoors. And then we're going to do uh, Father's Day food truck frenzy. So come. We have, and all the food trucks are listed here uh, for you guys. Uh, I don't know about you, but I'm going for the taco truck, all right? I just. There you go. Good Dutch boy having a little talk. And then uh, just uh, so please invite your dads. Adopt a dad if you need to and uh, take them along uh, with you. Of course, uh, new announcement for you this week is that uh, there is an all-church fishing trip that's planned on July 21st, 22nd, and 23rd in Webster. Maybe you can make it for a day. Maybe you can make it only for two days. But we want to encourage you to take part in that. And you can uh, text that phone number for more information. Now, some of you who are very astute in our type A people go, wait a minute, that's over our missions trip to Kentucky. And I, I regret to inform you today that that has been put on hold. Uh, and because the, the, the folks, this is good news, I think, because the Kentucky folks are actually ahead of schedule and they're needing more specialized uh, carpentry, electricians, plumbers, all of that fun stuff. So they don't want me to come paint, I guess. So uh, anyway, we are going to be looking for some local mission projects to be doing that week. So if you have anything in mind, please let the mission folks know today. And uh, we want, we're going to try to do something a little bit more local. Uh, and we are local. Amen. 
Then every Sunday night in July, we're going to be doing uh, what we're calling Family Connect Night, and we'll give you more details in the weeks ahead because my announcements are getting long. Hallelujah. Yep, so there you go. Cease. And a confirmation. Well, uh, I want to invite a couple guests up here this morning. One you probably know pretty well and uh, love pretty well. I mean, we all love Joseph. And so, Joseph, would you uh, uh, come up front here? And, uh, and then I want to invite Cheryl uh, Thacker to come up here. And I believe she's on her chariot. So, uh, Cheryl, if you would uh, come forward. Take your time. Yeah, this gives Joseph a little encouragement. A little faster, Joseph. There you go. Do we have Cheryl? I hope so. Well, we talked about this. <laughs> I got to see. It's hard to see. I'm going to give you the white mic. There you go. You're number two. And uh, do we have Cheryl? Cheryl, we talked about. We did rehearse this. <laughs> the fact that she. Well, Joseph, we're going to put you on the on the hot seat right now. Perfect. All right. So. Uh, That's why wh- I don't that, that's right. <laughs> it's always a challenge outdoors because there's Cheryl. Everybody wave at Cheryl. She's coming on the chariot. All right, come on over, Cheryl. There we go. It's a parade. Talk about a grand entrance. This is amazing. All right, don't run over any to- Cheryl, just swing around here. There you go. Micah, he doesn't care if you take off that right side of his body. That wasn't Brianna's favorite side anyway. Perfect. Good morning. Come on, get a little closer. There we go. There you just stay here. Well, the folks online can see you. Here's a, a microphone. All right. Well, uh, I want to, to, to have these uh, two amazing folks come this morning uh, because we do have a privilege that we normally don't have, and that is to, to, to have a few moments here on New Life's property and talk about the ministry of New Life. And uh, this might get a little windy, so I'm sorry for me. Uh, But there's a huge history here that I don't think most of our church knows about. And uh, that is in the 70s when uh, when Woodstock, the American Reformed Church then, was meeting in the, the beautiful old wood building, which is now our parking lot, uh, there was a growth problem. Couldn't fit in the old building any longer. And so there was this, this conversation of, hey, the old school across the street is for sale. Let's try to purchase that and make that the new home. And you know what? No matter how much conversation was had, no, much, no matter how, how much uh, voting and convincing, there was, for some reason, that door to purchase this property just would not come open. And I think it was frustrating for some. And, and yet now we know, looking back, you know, hindsight's twenty twenty. we know that God didn't want the American Reformed Church to have this property because he had bigger things in store. And, uh, and so, therefore, today, we get to have, be across the street from one of the most incredible ministries, in my opinion, uh, in this region. And so, Cheryl, would you tell us a little bit about New Life and what takes place here? Do you have a green light? Blue mic, folks. Are we green? Green means go. Okay. Um, Well, New Life has been here for 45 years as of this past May. And, um, you know, it's it's an exciting place to be. We get a front row seat to miracles every single day. Um, Sometimes they're big, sometimes they're small. But we can see God's hand at work every single day. Um, Folks come here at a really difficult time in their lives. They come because they recognize that they are broken. And they come hungry to change. And some don't even know that when they arrive. And yet, God has made an appointment for them here at this place. And um, we are just grateful to be able to partner with the Holy Spirit here. We're, um, you know, we say we meet people where they're at. We love them for who they are. And then we help them to discover who it is they were created to be. And I don't think anyone was created to be an alcoholic or an addict. But I do believe that no matter what happens in any of our journeys, God is able to redeem that and to use that to his good purpose and to use it to glorify him. And so um, every day we watch people come through the door. We hear their stories. And then we watch God work in their lives. And one of the most exciting things, and we, you know, You'd think we'd get used to it, but we really never do, is watching both the physical transformation, but the spiritual transformation 
and the emotional transformation that happens in people's lives over 30 days. There's a point at which um, we see the light come back into somebody's eyes. And, you know, that, that's life. And, we, and it, it's hope. Um, a large part of our staff have walked this journey ahead of our clients and are able to share from their own experience strength and hope. We have 21 inpatient beds. We have seven detox beds. We're a very small facility compared to a lot in the state of Minnesota. But almost everybody who walks through our doors, when they leave, they say there was something different here. This is different than any other place I've ever been. And we just smile because we know that's the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. One of the things, Cheryl, when, when I arrived here and, I, uh, and it, we started talking about new life, there was a misconception that uh, you are a for-profit institution. No, we are not. We are a 501c3 nonprofit corporation. We are um, operated by a board of directors that we believe are God-appointed. And um, let me tell you, we're, we're like... It's not just we're nonprofit. We're we run in the red most of the time, and we rely heavily on the gifts of God's people to be able to accomplish what we accomplish. Because the the cost is not covered by insurance or whatever the funders are. It for us to be able to do what we do, we need the help of God's people. And let me just take a second to say what an amazing amazing partnership. I, I have just seen that grow over the past few years. And, um, you know, whether it's, whether it's helping our facility with something or whether it's reaching out and, and helping a specific client or, uh, and, and of course, always the prayers and the spiritual encouragement that this congregation offers to us is invaluable. It's, it, it just warms our hearts. And so, um, we are grateful every day. And I would say as a church, we're honored to be a part of that. And Joseph is on the board of deacons, and I think he could speak to that. I think we're honored as a church uh, of the fact that uh, in rural America, uh, we have the world come to us each and every week. And it is so humbling uh, to have new like f friends come each and every week to worship. And Joseph, would you speak to that as, as both a board member and as a, as a brother of our church? Talk to, talk to us about what that means. So I, I, something that Cheryl said is, is we get to watch clients, friends, people that, that I, I have a privilege that I get to see every day. And it is a privilege. It, it's, it's a privilege to walk beside you guys and to watch God change your lives because that's what he's doing. And uh, it's a privilege to be part of, of a group of people with, with the congregation from across the street to be able to to walk alongside you guys and to support you guys. And it's exciting to me to see God work in your lives because we, we're kind of, we kind of get used to it, but it's, it's, it's amazing to see God work in you guys' lives. It is. And uh, so I want to thank you guys for, for all of the, the support that you've given, all of the help that you've given. Um, sometimes we get caught up in the day-to-day -day here and uh, we, we forget what we're here for. And uh, we're here to see people change. We're here to see God work in, in lives. And, and uh, so thank you for, for supporting that and for being a part of that. We, we really appreciate it. And so, Joseph, another reason that I have you up here this morning is because recently you came on staff felt God, and it was just a chain of miracles, don't you think, yes, Cheryl? Yes, it was, and, uh, and, and I know that you've been struggling getting to like Joseph, but it's coming <laughs> along. <laughs> By the way, I didn't announce this at the beginning. Cheryl's the director at New Life, <laughs> so let's, uh, let's clear that. So she's Joseph's boss, and, uh, and so... Nobody is Joseph's <laughs> boss. <laughs> yeah, no, but Joseph, tell us the perspective of going from somebody sitting in the seat on Sunday morning and seeing New Life clients come in to now... Uh, and driving by the facility multiple times a week to now being on staff. What, how has your perspective changed, and how can you encourage us? So it, it's a world of difference. I, before I started here, I, I don't think I had ever been in the building. I, I had no idea what was going on here. And um, you, I see you guys come over every Sunday, and I try to say hi, 
but I'm I'm kind of Dutch, and uh, you're different. <laughs> you're different. You're <laughs> different. Okay. <laughs> so I, I I have a hard time sometimes reaching out and and introducing myself and getting to know people, and um, switching from the job that I was at to this job was was this isn't a job to me. It really isn't. It's a, it's a ministry, it's an opportunity that God has given me. That's the way I feel about it. And it's, it's, a, it's a great privilege. So when, when you switch from actually, from not being a part of, really a part of this, to working here every day, and you get to see the clients, see you guys go over there on Sundays, and participate and, and uh, open up and visit with people, it's, it's, it's a miracle, it really is. And I guess it's it's it is hard when you when you just see someone once a week to to open up and and ask how you're doing and, and be involved in your life. But I would encourage you to do that because God opens doors when you do that. He really does, and uh, he he uses people. He uses us to to lift each other up, and that's that's what we're here for. Amen. So. Amen. Oh yeah, Joseph. Um, took upon himself to do a Bible study each week with, with the gentleman, and that has been amazing. Um, I would love to have a volunteer to do a Bible study with the ladies, so if anybody would like to take that on, that would be amazing. Um, that is one of the things that we just see is, is just the hunger for God's Word. And, um, you know, it is, uh, it is exciting. We are grateful to have Joseph. He's been a really cool connection to to the church and um, we're blessed all of our staff I, I just you know so often I have um, have folks who say to me I your staff is amazing I don't think any of them are here just because it's a paycheck they really believe in what they do and they believe in us um, as clients we really do fall in love with our clients they're part of our family and will be forever. And um, you know that is that is that is God's gift to us. Because I used to think that the most courageous thing I ever saw anybody do was walk through those doors for the first time. I've now changed my mind, and I think the most courageous thing I see people do is walk out the door um, to start that new life. And followed closely by, you know, when you stumble, coming back, and knowing that you're going to be greeted with love and not shame, that um, we understand the, the struggle, and, uh, you know, it's like we're going to pick up and we're going to start where we left off, and you're going to take what you learned, and we're going to build on that, and uh, that's a pretty powerful thing. That's something that people say to me all the time is I, I was, it was so hard to come back. I was so ashamed. And I, I didn't, I, I wasn't, I wasn't shamed when I came. I was loved. There, amen. If you are, and I know that many of the staff were here yesterday for the event and hopefully they're home with their families for those that don't have to be working today but if you are a new life staff would you please stand Susie anybody else all There's right hands way in the back in, Emily over there some of them are inside right now so how many staff just real quick Cheryl just give me a number we have 43 43 staff that work there and so I would love for us as a church to just take, yes, give them a frontline warriors. Can I just real quick, um, that, that 43 includes, because we're a 24-7, 365 facility. And that 43 also includes our staff um, at the Sober House, our staff at uh, our outpatient in Worthington. And we have a community-based outpatient in Worthington. And then we also offer outpatient services to incarcerated individuals at the Nobles County Jail. So that staff includes those folks too. Awesome, awesome. Let's uh, just extend a hand to those folks around you that were standing, if you will. And I just want to pray for the staff and the ministry. Uh, I think one of the hardest things for me uh, every week is seeing the faces that have gone on. We fall in love with you folks. 
each and every time you come to service and then all of a sudden we don't see those faces anymore. But we pray that the impact that has been made will follow you and then hopefully there was something that you encountered in the Spirit that you take with you uh, as you go to the next step. And so Lord Jesus, we just want to thank you so much, Lord God, for our new life friends. Lord God, we want to thank you, Lord God, for the, the courageous call that you have on their life to come and receive the freedom that can be found in only you. Lord God, we want to thank you for new life and it being a ministry 24-7 to those that are in need, those that are in need of a fresh start, those that are in need to encounter your grace and mercy, uh, maybe for the first time. Lord God, we want to thank you for the staff members, Lord God, that uh, it's not about a paycheck. They could make far more money other places, and yet, Lord God, it's a calling on their life. And so, Lord God, we ask that you would re-energize them, that you would refuel them. Lord God, that you would reignite a fire within them to continue to press on. Lord God, we pray that you would provide for every one of New Life's financial needs according to your glorious riches, Lord Jesus. Lord God, we ask that you would put miracle upon miracle upon miracle, Lord God, on this staff, that the Lord God, that they would see an over and abundance in everything and every way, shape, or form of their life, Lord God, as they give out and pour out, uh, Lord God, to these uh, clients. Lord God, we ask that you would help encourage us as a church to continue to be vigilant for the warfare that takes place each and every day here. Lord God, we know that there's an enemy, Lord God, that wants to attack uh, staff members and, and Lord clients each and every day, distracting them for the life-giving freedom that you offer. Lord God, help us to be more alert and uh, alerted to what that looks like. Lord God, to be able to carry that shield of faith, to be able to come around and to encourage, Lord God, those that work at New Life and those that come through the doors at New Life, that the enemy may know that he has no right, no power, no authority over this property. Lord God, that there would be always an open heaven above New Life Treatment Center. Lord God, that the angel armies from heaven would come in and out, Lord God, ministering to clients each and every day in special and unique ways. Lord God, that, that, that we would see your hand at work powerfully. In Jesus' name we pray in a faith-filled church said, Amen. Joseph and Cheryl, thank you, thank you, thank you. And exiting. By the way, I could use a chariot if anybody is looking to bless the... I'm just kidding. That's kind of fun. I uh, Just a couple... Uh, uh, pr praise God for the breeze. Amen. Hopefully our music stands don't uh, end up getting lost. But I want to just uh, take a few moments to also pray for a few other miracles that we've seen this week. And, and I think one of them in particular is, is Dawson. We continue to see God doing miraculous things. They had a couple uh, pretty major setbacks earlier on in the week. And then uh, Mary came and visited yesterday. And, uh, and, and Grandma Mary just uh, couldn't speak more highly of, of the conversation that she was able to have with Dawson. Uh, the fact that he's eating food on his own, that he's able to hold a conversation conversation with them, uh, and, and hoping and praying that he will be moved uh, to another facility in, uh, in either Omaha or Lincoln to do uh, rehab, uh, to be able to do that physical rehabilitation uh, as well as the mental uh, rehabilitation. And so prayers that that would take place, and I, uh, for, for some reason I'm forgetting the name of that facility, uh, but you could certainly ask Mary or Gary and they'll fill you in. Also staying in tuned on Caring Bridge, you're going to find a lot of updates there. But we also have a number of folks in our church that are hurting, and, 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 and quite frankly, uh, a number of folks that, that don't want specifics shared. But we have uh, folks in our midst that are, are struggling financially. We have folks in our midst that are struggling emotionally. Uh, we have uh, f folks in our midst that are, are struggling uh, uh, with uh, uh, physically uh, and in our need of a touch from God. And I don't know about you, but we know that God is a miracle-working God. Amen? And so let's bring those cares before him this morning. Heavenly Father, we come before you and we want to praise you and thank you, Lord God, for the beautiful Sunday morning. Lord God, we feel the breeze, and Lord God, as I feel the breeze this morning, and Lord God, I hear it going through the mic, uh, Lord God, I, I just am reminded of the breeze of the Holy Spirit, the wind of the Holy Spirit that we talked about last week, and Lord God, we want to just thank you for the reminder this, this day that you are with us. Lord God, that you are nearer than that wind blowing across our skin. Lord God, that you are, are moving mightily and powerfully in our midst, and even in ways, Lord God, sometimes we don't know or see. But, Lord God, that as we trust in faith, we know, God, that you are doing amazing things. And we want to praise you, God, for the amazing work that's taking place in Dawson's life right now. And, God, we ask for continued miracles. Lord God, we ask that you continue to show us those miracles. And, Lord God, we're going to broadcast those. We're going to shout it from the rooftop. 
Lord God, of the wonder-working power that's at work in Dawson's life. And Lord God, I want to just thank you yesterday that, that Dawn uh, was out on a ranger ride, and Lord God, that she's doing so much better. We want to thank you for the success of, uh, of Ken's surgery uh, this week on, on his cataract. And Lord God, as they look at his other eye and he prepares for another surgery, Lord God, we pray for miracles there as well. Lord God, this morning we, we pray for those that are hurting, Lord, that don't uh, feel like they're in a place to share those things. Lord God, those that are hurting fi financially, physically, emotionally, God, touch them especially today. Lord God, we know that, that, that there is darkness that is looming around us and we can feel it, Lord God. We can see it in our country. Lord God, we can see it in our community. And Lord God, we ask for a revival to take place in the hearts of the believer. Lord God, we pray for an awakening to take place within the churches. Lord God, within Woodstock Community Church and churches around and in this nation that we would wake up to the call that we have, that a sleeping giant would arise. Lord God, we pray against the demonic forces right now that are trying to stir within our churches that want to bring apathy and lethargy. Those uh, demonic forces, Lord God, that want to make us, Lord, uh, come asleep to what's happening in our world. Lord God, we pray that we would be alerted and, Lord God, that we would be on our knees and, Lord God, that we would be ever active to reaching our neighbor. Lord God, those that are lost and dying, that they might hear the good news of Jesus Christ, Lord God. And we pray that the Holy Spirit would go before us and stir within the spirits of those that we encounter, that they would be hungering to hear the good news of you, Lord Jesus. Lord God, this morning we pray for peace in our land. We pray for a healing in our land and we pray for a peace in this world. Lord God, we ask that we would see you come powerfully. And Lord God, that we would be reminded of those words that you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy work be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day. Amen. Well, in that mode this morning, I would love for us to just stand and greet one another. Would you please just take that moment, go find somebody you don't know, shake a hand, give a hug, tell them Jesus loves you and uh, that loves them and so do you. people over here but you all look real bright <laughs> um, so this morning we are gonna start with coming alive um, and a lot of you probably go well, I am alive um, but the thing is 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 that um, I'm reminded of, of something that when Brian and I were practicing or training to be counselors um, we had to do everything that we asked our people to do and so we had to go and find something that reminded us of what our heart looked like and I went and found we were in Ohio and I went and found like this really cool thing and it was like a, a, a cone um, and it was all sleek and really smooth and I was like oh yeah Lord like how awesome is that 
like, I'm so awesome. I'm just sleek and smooth. And he's like, no, <laughs> um, you're really closed. And, uh, and so in that moment I went, I, I'm not maybe so great at letting people into my life. And so I prayed in that moment that God would teach me what it looked like to let people in. And the next morning I woke up and that whole pine cone had opened. And, and what a picture of that, of how God will just answer those things when we, when we pray. This is, this is really fun. Anyway, and so we are just going to worship this morning, maybe. Maybe have a guitar. I'm going to keep talking, he said. He said, tell a joke. That's dangerous. <laughs> good? No, I'm not good. Yeah, I'm good. Thank you, Levi. Thank you. Can you hear me? Awesome. They can hear me. Thank you, Al. We got such a great team around here, don't we? So let's sing.
Jesus, we thank you so much. God, we thank you for your son. God, we thank you for the power that he came to bring. Father God, the freedom he came to bring. Father God, we thank you. We thank you that he came to set us free. God, help us to grab onto that. God, help us to call out your son's name, Jesus. And God, even if there aren't any other words, that that is enough. I just want to speak the name of Jesus Over every heart and every mind Cause I know there is peace within your presence I speak Jesus starts to break, declaring there is hope and there is freedom, I speak
God, I speak Jesus over your physical. God, I speak Jesus over relationships. God, we know that one, one word, Jesus, can change it all. Just Jesus. Father God, help us to call on that name more often. Help us to stop doing things ourselves. We speak Jesus this morning in your name. Amen. Somebody left me presents up here. That was very nice. Here you go. I'll give this to you. Perfect. How are y'all? Getting a nice tan? You guys aren't burning down here, are you? No. Okay, perfect. Well, uh, it's so fun to be outside. I like being outside. Anybody else like to be outside? If you are, uh, there goes that little, we, we try to wind sock, it doesn't want to stick with me. So if it gets too windy, I will, uh, I'll grab a different microphone. But we're going to be going uh, to the book of Mark uh, this morning. Mark chapter 5. Mark chapter 5, starting in verse 1. And as I threatened or promised uh, a number of weeks ago, we're starting uh, today a new series. How many of you have ever read through Scripture or heard different messages where, where all, you, you, you're reading through the Scriptures or you're hearing those messages and you realize that the people that we're talking about don't have a name that Scripture mentions? Anybody, anybody ever have that? I, I mean, there are so many of them, over 40 from my very quick count. There's over 40 different references in Scriptures where uh, people have amazing things happen to them or they have incredible God encounters and, and yet, we never know their name. And so I want to spend the next few weeks really looking at some of those really precious accounts in Scripture. We're not going to hit all 40 of them, okay? Everybody says hallelujah. All right? We're not going to go through all of them. Uh, but we're going to look at the uh, extraordinary nobodies. And that's going to be the title of, of, this, uh, of this series, Extraordinary Nobodies. Uh, but the bottom line is, is, even though we might not know their name, God knows their name. And that they were called on purpose and for a purpose, and God had extraordinary things in store for them. And, and maybe you can relate with that. I pray at the end of this series, we will all be able to relate with that, of going, God has extraordinary things in store for us. And future generations may not know our names, and yet what God plants in us, we pray, will live on for eternity. Amen? And so, uh, Val, I'm going to grab the blue mic. Because I'm not feeling blue. All right, we'll, we'll try. All right, blue? Blue? There we go. And so I want to uh, turn in these scriptures to Mark. I'm, I'm abusing this just in case you, so that you, the wind doesn't blow through the mic so much. It has a sock on it. Hallelujah. <laughs> Technology. Mark chapter 5. The title of uh, this message is Walking Free. And we're going to be looking at what scripture refers to as the demoniac. I'm fascinated by this story. Fascinated because I think there's more questions than answers here. That's what keeps me going back. Is when I'm curious as to things that I don't know. Maybe that will be the case for you today as we read through this. This uh, account in Scripture is so noteworthy that it is actually in three of the four Gospels. That's how it, uh, important it was that it become a part of Scripture, both Matthew, Mark, and and Luke write about it. I'm going to take Mark's account today, but I would encourage you throughout this next week to look in Matthew chapter 8 or Luke chapter 8 uh, for this account as well and read the different nuances in them 
starting with verse 1 of, of uh, chapter 5 of Mark. And they went across the lake to the region of the Gerasians. That's Jesus and his disciples. And when Jesus got out of the boat, a man with an impure spirit came from the tombs to meet him. This man lived in the tombs and no one could bind him anymore, not even with a chain. For he had often been chained hand and foot, but he tore the chains apart and broke the irons on his feet. No one was strong enough to subdue him. Imagine! I know we have some pretty strong guys here, but I don't think if I tied Virgil in chains, even though he's one of the strongest men I know, I'm, I'm not so sure that he would be able to break them. I don't know, boys. What do you think? Could your dad do it? Should we try it? No, not today. All right. Oh, yeah, they want to try. All right. When you get home, you have permission to try this on your dad, okay? All right. Moving on. Verse 5. Night and, and day among the tombs and in the hill, he would cry out and he would cut himself with stones. When he saw Jesus at a distance, he ran and fell on his knees in front of him. He shouted at the top of his voice, What do you want with this Jesus, Son of the Most High God? In the Greek, there's a change that takes place at this point. We're going to talk a little bit later about that change. There's a change in his voice. There's a change in his demeanor when we hear these words, what do you want with us? And there's an evilness to it. What do you want with us? Jesus, son of the most high God. In God's name, don't torture me. For Jesus, has said, for Jesus had said to him, come out of this man, you impure spirit. Then Jesus asked him, what is your name? My name is Legion, he replied, for we are many. And he begged Jesus again and again not to send them out of the area. A large herd of pigs was feeding on a hill nearby. The demons begged Jesus, send us among the pigs, allow us to go into them. And he gave them permission and the impure spirits came out and went into the pigs. The herd, about 2,000 in number, rushed down the steep bank into the lake and were drowned. Those who were tending the pigs ran off and reported this in the town and in the countryside. And the people went out to see what had happened. And when they came to Jesus, they saw the man who had been possessed by the legion of demons sitting there dressed and in his right mind. And they were overjoyed, excited, and revival broke out. Oh man, that, that didn't happen. And in fact, he, they saw him in his right mind and they were afraid. Those who had seen it, what had happened, told the people what had happened of the demon-possessed man and told about the pigs as well. And then the people begged and pleaded for Jesus to do miracles in their midst and to save their families and do incredible things. Oh, no, that, that's wrong, too. That's the Brian version. That's the humanistic version. No, in verse 17, the true version. Then the people begged and pleaded with Jesus to leave their region. As Jesus was getting into the boat, the man who had been demon-possessed begged to go with him. Jesus did not let him go, but said, Go home to your own people. And tell them how much the Lord has done for you and how he has had mercy on you. So the man went away and began to tell in the Decapolis how much Jesus had done for him. And all the people were amazed. Lord God, we want to thank you so very much for your word. Lord, we want to thank you that it's true that when we Lord, that we can stand on it. Lord God, that we can trust it. And that you come alive through it. Lord God, in the moments that we have together this, hour, this morning, Lord, I pray that your spirit would move mightily in our midst. Lord God, that your will would be accomplished here on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. 
We read through those 20 verses in Mark about the demoniac. But it's important to know what led up to that, I think. And in each one of the accounts, in each one of the Gospels that, that I had mentioned earlier, Matthew, uh, Mark, and Luke, uh, the story uh, that comes before, what happens before they crossed over and arrived in this Gentile region of the Gerasians, was there was a mighty storm that came up. Jesus had been teaching, had been encountering Pharisees most of the day, had been coming up against kind of their shellacking, if you will. And finally, he tells uh, the disciples to get in the boat, and they are going to cross over to the other side. Of course, they, they get into the boat, and we know about this storm. Jesus falls asleep, and, and, and the disciples are worried for their lives, and they're bailing out water, and finally they call out to Jesus, Do you not even care, Jesus, that we're about ready to die? And Jesus wakes up and he speaks to the storm and he says, peace, and the storm quiets. I wonder for those of us that encounter Jesus, maybe for those of you that are New Life clients, maybe for those of you that are in a place right now that are encountering a storm, how many of us have encountered storms like described in Scripture in our own personal lives that happen before we experience breakthrough? Can I tell you, that storm that was brought up was, was not of natural forces, but supernatural forces. And what we find in this scripture and we find in those scriptures is that the enemy has power. I wish that he didn't, but he does. And let me tell you that the enemy is a punk and he doesn't play fair. Isn't God fun how the spirit works like that? Can I tell you, I'd imagine for each one of you New Life clients that have, those that have, ha, are currently here, those that have been here in the past, those that have uh, been on the, the precipice of breakthrough, the storm that the enemy wants to create to distract is huge. For those of you that have a storm happening in your life right now, I want to encourage you to take courage that Jesus is in your midst, that Jesus is on the way. You might feel battered, you might feel tossed around, but all we need to do is to cry out on the name of Jesus, and at His name, at His name, the winds will subside. At His name, there is power. At His name, the enemy must flee, Scripture tells us. Amen. I pray that in the midst of your storm, that you could cry out to Jesus and find his comfort and his peace. After the storm, we find out that almost immediately they end up on the other shore. Almost immediately they're there. And, and here I find this fa phenomenal as we look from a 30,000 foot view at, at this demoniac man and what's taking place. Do you realize that Jesus crossed over eight miles of sea in stormy weather, of course he calmed it, hallelujah, but he crossed for one person. I want you now, Matthew says there were two. I'm going to get to that later. But, but, but then, and, and, and that's true, there were two. So let's say he crossed over for two people, but it stuck with one. I want to just say today that Jesus has divine appointment with each and every one of us. That he will cross through whatever it takes to get to you. Amen. Are you ready? Are you ready to receive? What I find amazing about that scripture is that this man who is demon-possessed and not with just a few, we're told that there's a legion, and a legion is 6,000 plus in number. That's a lot of demons. And yet even in the midst of that demon possession, that man goes and runs and meets Jesus. The Bible says here, according to Mark and Luke, that the moment Jesus steps off that boat, how tenacious are you to go find Jesus? When you know that Jesus' presence is near to you, are you willing to meet him right then and right there? Jesus had a divine appointment with this one man or this two man, these two men. Jesus arrives, and I want to spend a little time talking about this man because there are many things that these three accounts tell us about this man. One, we know that he has been demon-possessed for a long time. He has been going through a dark season for a long time. Everybody say long time. Maybe you've been encountering a storm for a long time. 
Maybe you've been in a difficult situation for a long time. Maybe you've been faced with an issue for a long time. Maybe you've been faced with an addiction for a long time and your situation feels hopeless. Guess what, this is for you. Not only was he, uh, 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 not only had he been in this state for a long time, but he was also naked. I think that's awkward, so we'll move on. No, we won't. Maybe some of you feel like you've been in a state and a situation for a long time and you feel like you have been ba laid bare. Everybody has seen your junk. Every, everybody has seen your struggles. Everybody has had the front line view to what you're dealing with and you just feel absolutely exposed. Help is on the way. Not only do we find out that he had been naked and that he had been in this condition for a long time, but we also find that he was homeless. He had a family, we find that out later, but he had not been welcomed nor he had had a roof over his head for many years. Then we also find in the scripture as we talk about this man that he was living in a place surrounded by death. He was among the tombs. He's in a graveyard. Isn't that exactly where the enemy would want to take us when we're in our deepest, darkest moments? He wants to take us to the precipice of death. After all, his, his, his motive is to kill you. And he's going to do it to the best of his ability. Here he is living in a dead place. Isn't it amazing when we get to those dark moments that we find ourselves trapped in a dead, dark place. He's living amongst the tombs. He, he had to have thought so many times about suicide. In fact, Mark talks about the fact that he was cutting himself with sharp rocks. Maybe that's you today. Maybe you've been in that place where you have contemplated taking your life. You've been alone. You've been laid bare. You have feel like you're hopeless and helpless, that there's nowhere else to turn. I want to tell you, this is for you today. Amen. Not only had, was he in a place of death now, but there it says that he had been repeatedly placed in chains. That means he had been incarcerated. He'd been in lockdown over and over again, and yet nothing could contain him. Maybe you feel like you have been incarcerated and trapped for a long period of time, facing hardships and addiction and loss. And then finally, Mark talks about the fact that they now he was among the tomb in a solitary place. He's all alone. He's all alone. No one dares even go near him. And in fact, there are some uh, commentators that, that, that go, he had probably not encountered another human being for many, many years until he sees Jesus. Might have been one of the reasons why they ran down, why he ran down to see Jesus, because he had not encountered people for a long time. I believe it's because he saw something in Jesus. He sensed the power of God, his only way out. Maybe you feel in that lonely place, trapped, orphaned, lonely, naked, cold, afraid, and hopeless. But we find out as Jesus puts foot on that shore, the man meets Jesus, the creator of the universe. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I find it interesting that here that, that man came running to meet Jesus and fell at his feet. My question for those of you that have been in or in that place where you are naked, lonely, and afraid, where you feel hopeless and helpless, have you met Jesus? If you haven't, I pray that you go meet him today. That you encounter him here. That you go running to wherever you can find him. Isn't it amazing? And if I, I find the, the most fascinating part about this story is the fact that, that the darkness, the demons knew exactly who he is without a shadow of a doubt. And yet earlier that day or the day before when Jesus was teaching the Pharisees and the Sadducees and those that had gathered around, they questioned and questioned and questioned who he was. But the demonic forces encountered Jesus and they know him right away and they stand in fear and they stand in awe of him. My question is to you today, church, whether you're listening online, or whether you're sitting here today, do you know the power and awe of your creator, Jesus? Do you know him intimately? 
Without a shadow of a doubt, the darkness knew who he was. They realized who he was. And there is a shift, like I said, in the Greek, where here we find that the man runs down to Jesus, but it's mi the minute that he falls on his knees, there's a shift in that verse where we find out that it's not the man talking any longer, but it's the demonic forces that are talking. That man, being so hopeless, so helpless, still had free will. If we look carefully at Luke chapter 8, verse 29, we see that Jesus in the Greek had commanded those impure spirits to come up on this fasting to come out multiple times. And every time that Jesus commanded those spirits to come out, they would throw him to the ground over and over again. Did Jesus have the power to do it one and done? Absolutely. But I believe for us as the reader, we can look at this and go, there was some bad stuff going on here. And the enemy is a real enemy. You know that he's real. Sometimes I believe that we believe in the power of darkness more than we believe in the power of light. It sure got quiet out here. I believe that we, 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 we see the darkness for what it is and we recognize it. But the thing is, is that we don't believe in the opposite power of the light and what it can do in our lives. Church, we need to wake up to the power that's been given and afforded to us through the power of the Holy Spirit. Jesus had called that spirit out several times. And what I appreciate about this is that they then, what I appreciate about the fact that Jesus repeatedly called that out is that Jesus was being persistent, insistent, and pursuant. Can I tell you, that's what Jesus is for you. Jesus is persistent, insistent, and pursuant. He's after you, church, in a good way. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He is after you, and let me tell you, even when you step away, when you walk away, when you doubt, when you fear, when you, you feel like he isn't anywhere close to you, can I tell you that he is persistent in his pursuit of you? He's insistent in his love for you, and he is pursuing every step of the way. Do you see it? Verse 30, we see that, that uh, in Mark, that they asked, the demons asked Jesus not to torture them. Asked for them to leave him alone. And when Jesus wouldn't leave them alone, to cast them into the pigs. And when I find out, uh, and, and not to send, they asked him first, not to send them into the abyss. Can I tell you, the enemy knows exactly where his destiny is. He knows exactly what's waiting for him. We see the abyss referred to so many times in Scripture as a place that's created for the demonic forces to go. What I find fascinating in the midst of that is they knew what their destiny is. The question I have for you today, church, is do you know what your destiny is? Do you know what your future holds? Jesus cast them into the pigs. That's a whole other sermon that I won't get into. However, immediately upon those pigs, or those demons going into those pigs, they go and they run off the cliff. Why is that? Isn't that fascinating? Anybody ever thought, why? 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 I don't know if I can answer that fully, but I do see power in the midst of that. And let me tell you, animals don't have free will. You do, because you're created in God's image. Hallelujah. We all on the same page. Animals do not have free will. I know that crushes some of you. But the bottom line is that there's not a soul in an animal, but there's a soul within a human being. The bottom line is, is that when those demonic forces entered into those pigs, there was no will to resist them. And so what did, those, what did the demonic forces do? Kill, steal, and destroy immediately. That's the power that's at work when the enemy's at work. And yet you today, no matter how far off you feel, you might go, man, the enemy has been after me. There's a full court press. Can I tell you? There's still free will where you can accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. There's still a power within you of the Holy Spirit, if you accept it, that will make him flee. Those pigs go down and they, 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 they take their lives. That's what the enemy wants to do to this man, but he can't. Or not yet. The herders saw what took place. And they went back and told everybody, wouldn't you? By the way, this is just a we, we got a few moments, right? How many of you have ever worked pigs before? I swear, I, I have met those demonic pigs. So anybody who's ever worked pigs, you know exactly what that looks like. 
So just thought, thought you should know that there's a few hog farmers out here yet. And I learned a whole lot of demonic stuff by loading pigs as well. Languages I should never have known, words that I should have never been taught. Anyway, that was free. Um, had to lighten the mood just a moment. Those people saw what took place. They saw a power that they did not know and they went and they told everybody. And they decided to come out onto the hillside to, to, to see what took place, more to see what the spectacle was, what the, well, what, yeah, what else are you going to do on a, an afternoon? Let's go see what took place there. And they go out and, and, and they see this man that they had known for a long time that they had known of. They didn't want to go out into the tombs. They heard him, Matthew says, they heard him crying in the night, screeching among the tombs. It would have made their blood go cold. They wouldn't want it to have been anywhere near him for what he carried. And yet they come out to see if this was actually true. And when they arrive there, they find out that it is absolutely true. And that here this man is clothed and in his right mind. That's the power of Jesus. Amen. When we encounter Jesus, he clothes us with his righteousness. And we become of a sound mind. Amen. Our mind is no longer fixed on anything else but other than him. And boy, isn't that a battle some days to keep our minds fixed on him. And yet here he is in his right mind. And yet in the midst of it, and they stood in awe, it said uh, in Matthew. They, they, they stood in wonder and yet fear gripped them. Fear took over when they saw this happen. How many times when we see mighty things of God and fear hits us and it's not a holy fear. And these folks, these Gentiles saw this man in his right mind and knew that Jesus had done it and asked them to leave. I can't imagine it. And yet, how many times do we do that in our own lives? How many times we're seeing it in our country right now and I'm not getting political, I'm being real with you today. We wonder why there's mass shootings taking place, why 3,300 babies will die in the United States today because at the hand of a doctor. We wonder why our kids are gender confused, why there's madness in our world. It's because we've asked God to leave. Amen. Church, we've become lackadaisical about what we have been afforded and the power that he has given us and the responsibility that we have. I'm going to get very, I am angry. I'm angry that we have come to the place where we think it's okay to sit in our comfortable little homes while we watch people die all around us and wish there was something we could do. There is something we can do. It's the church of God to arise and get to work. And you're going to hear me preach it until I take my last breath. We need revival. We need our land to be healed. We need God to show up. There are those that are lost and dying each and every day. And that's why I'm so grateful for places like New Life that take that responsibility, uh, the holisticness of a person so seriously to minister 24-7 to those that struggle with addiction. And church, we better be ministering 24-7. Yeah. We have work to be done. Here they asked him to leave. And let me tell you, Jesus is a perfect gentleman. He didn't go, no, there's so many more that I could reach. You know what? I want to I wanna tell you about eternity. I want to tell you about what's afforded in a relationship with me. Jesus does none of those things. He politely leaves, gets in a boat, and goes. Church, I pray that we haven't asked him to leave our homes. I pray that we haven't asked him to leave our communities, even in our inactivity. But that we are constantly asking Jesus to make himself manifest and known here in our midst. They were struck with fear. What I find phenomenal and fascinating about that, phenomenal is maybe not a good word, it breaks my heart actually, but in all accounts it says that all of them asked him to leave. Not just a few, all. They had seen Jesus. They saw his wonder-working power, and yet they rejected it. They saw a man completely free, and yet didn't want it for themselves. Sometimes I wonder if they weren't more concerned with the pigs 
than they were for the man. Boy, doesn't that ever speak to where we're at today. More concerned about the financial loss of the herdsmen than concerned about the fact that a man who had been in bondage, who was on death's door, had been completely restored and redeemed. More interested and more comfortable in being in the darkness than being in the light. How many of us have had those God moments where our lives have been forever changed and then we go back to our families and they can't understand the freedom that we have? One of the things I hear from New Life clients over and over again is the fear of walking out and going home. It's safe here, but to go home and face our past is hard. To go home and, 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 and face what we've done, to face the family members who don't believe in us, there's also why I believe this man asked to go with Jesus. Can I please go with you, the Bible says, and Jesus said no. I would imagine he would have been devastated. And yet, in the midst of that, the reason, the reason that Jesus says, no, you can't come with me, is it because Jesus didn't love him or didn't, didn't have something for him to do or that he wouldn't have made a great disciple. But the bottom line is this is the first missionary that Jesus calls onto the mission field. This is the first missionary that Jesus says, now, I want you to go home and tell your family. I want you to tell your neighbors of the freedom that you've encountered. Go and tell them. He has been telling his disciples all along when he's back in Israel. He's telling them, don't tell them that I'm the Messiah. Don't tell them about the miracles that are happening. And yet when he goes across the lake, he says, now, you go tell them. And we find out in Acts that there's a harvest that's awaiting the apostles when they come back to the area of the decay because of what this man has done. Amen. New Life clients and those that are listening to me this morning, we need to go home and tell people about Jesus. We need to go to our workplaces and tell people about Jesus. We need to tell about the freedom that we've received. We need to live it out loud in such a way that people just cannot deny the power that's at work. And you know what? They might say, I wish you would leave my presence because I'm sick of hearing about Jesus. Well, good. Keep working. Church, there's a harvest to be brought in. There's a freedom that is afforded us in Jesus. And that man had received that freedom. I want to ask you today, have you received that freedom? Do you know that freedom for yourself? I pray that you do. In a few moments, I'm going to actually, as the worship team comes up, I'm going to ask you to contemplate that for a moment. And, and if you have not received that freedom or you're in a place where you feel like you're in bondage and you need to just get prayed over, let me tell you, I want you to come over here by this tree right here, this really fun, crooked tree. Think about all the adversity that tree has had, and yet it's still beautiful. Isn't that a story of our lives? I want to encourage you that if you need prayer this morning, there will be people here. You come up to this tree, we'll come pray for you. We want you to receive that freedom today that's afforded in Jesus Christ. So, Lord God, right now as the worship team plays, Lord God, as they minister through this song, this powerful song, Lord God, I pray that we find freedom. Lord God, for those of us that have accepted you as personal Lord and Savior, Lord God, I pray that there would be a renewed call to speak out that freedom that we've encountered. That it's not just a one and done deal, but that it is a life expression. Lord God, for those that are in bondage right now, those that are chained, those that are feeling hopeless, helpless, naked, vulnerable, Lord God, I pray that they know today they are in a safe place. That the enemy can't hunt them here. That he has no power over their lives and that they can be free from that darkness. Lord Jesus, we continue to worship you today in spirit and in truth, asking that you would minister Holy Spirit to our hearts and into our minds and to our wills. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Guys, the freedom of standing up, sing with us. You guys don't have the words for this one, but it's a familiar one, so you guys might might know it. The verdict was guilty. Case closed. The end. No chance for me to ever leave this prison of my sin. And I know it might sound crazy, but one day a key unlocked that cell. I heard a small voice say your debt's been paid by somebody
All right, you can sit for just a moment. I know that uh, I, I made the accident of looking at my phone, and uh, I know that you guys were playing extra innings, but you'll be okay, right? You gotta move into the shade you can. Last week after service, Al, let's move this off. Last week after service, after we talked about baptism and we talked about taking that intentional step forward if you've never been baptized. The Bible says that we're to believe and be baptized. And uh, a young lady came up after service, and, and, uh, and we remember her from a number of months ago, and uh, the Spirit of God was working powerfully in her, in her life, and has been. And she said, listen, I've never been baptized. I want to be baptized. Can we make that happen? And so I went and grabbed an elder, and we sat down, we already did sat, we stood and talked for a while and, and asked the questions that needed to be asked, and, and, uh, and so I want to ask Britley to come forward. Britley, would you come? Would you welcome Britley this morning? Woo! Those microphones, what ended up happening to them? Oh, Al's already ahead of the game. Come on up. You get to be on the high platform. And this is going to feel really good because it's not quite 100 degrees. And so, Brittley, before you get into that uh, glorious swimming pool, I, I, what's God doing in your life? Can you give us just a little synopsis of, of what's happening? Um, is this on? Yeah. Oh, I can't hear myself. It's weird. <laughs> um, actually, God is doing a lot in my life. Um. Last year when I was in your church, I had a crazy Holy Spirit moment when I went up and actually, like, what just happened right now, I um, got prayed for, I don't know, um, and I, the bottoms of my feet started burning, and I was told it was the Holy Spirit, and it keeps happening to me all the time now, and it's just super crazy and awesome, and just like, yeah, every time I'm in your church, it happens, and now throughout, anytime I like strongly, like really connect with God, it happens, and um, 
and I just seek God a lot more. I've never, I didn't grow up religious or having God in my life, and now that I have Brenda, my, my counselor Brenda, um, help me find God, and um, I don't know, it's just super amazing, and I'm ready to continue this journey with God, and praise God, and just, I don't know. Yeah. Awesome. I, hate, I hate talking in front of people. So. Well, they're, 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 just, they're, not they're, they're not there. Nope. And so, a couple questions for you, Brittany. Yes. Is Jesus Christ your personal Lord and Savior? Yes. Do you f promise to follow him faithfully to the best of your ability for the rest of the days of your life? Yes. Brittany, do you promise to, f uh, well, you have a church family already waiting for you. We know that. Yes. But do you promise to continue to walk this faith journey out with them? to continue to walk in faithfulness, to continue to seek after him, to allow them to love you, correct, the, correct you in moments where that needs to happen, to love you lavishly, and, and to walk this journey of faith with them. What's your response? Yes, I do. Well, then, you have met that criteria. Yeah, you bet. <laughs> How's, does that feel all right? Yeah. Perfect. How cold yeah. is that? It's not, that cold. it's not. No. And just just for a moment, I, as she's soaking, we're gonna let her soak for a moment. Let's pray for Britley a moment. Lord God, we thank you for Britley. Lord God, we thank you for the testimony and the work of your Holy Spirit in her life that led her to this moment. Lord God, where she wants to be baptized. Lord God, where she feels the unction of the Spirit to move her in this direction. So, Lord God, we pray right now that as she goes under that water as a representation of death to sin and the life that we've left behind, and, Lord God, as she comes out of that water uh, as a representation of the resurrection we find in you, Lord God, may she find incredible power in you and a refreshing and a cleansing that can be only found in you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Ridley, since we have heard your testimony this morning, we now have the privilege of baptizing you in the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Now, Al's going to give you a hug. I'm just kidding. You go, man. Well, before you go, now that you're nice and wet, Al's got a couple things. Congratulations. We're so excited for you this morning and visiting with you last week was so much fun. Just seeing your, your faith and your understanding of what you're doing and that you're ready to take this step and uh, move forward with a changed life. God helping you every step of the way. You, we, we, like you said last week, you know there's going to be tough times, but God is there. You've seen that now. You understand it. You know how to fight through it. And you've got this. And you did so great this morning. And uh, we have for you um, a fun little plaque thing that uh, you can put on your wall and remember this day, especially when there's hard times. You can visualize that and say, you know what? I'm going through a tough time, but I remember this happened, and I know that I am a child of God, and I know he's here for me. And then we have this uh, fun little... Uh, devotional inspiration thing that you can go through day by day that'll help you with your walk and of course you can call any of us anytime and we would love to talk and visit as you go forward and uh, with your with your new life so congratulations and uh, the angels are rejoicing good family and asking you to rise to your feet Britley's gonna go uh, uh, go change I'm thinking you said you were uh, and, and, and then she's going to come back out and join us. So if you would like to get to know her a little bit more, if you'd like to encourage her, I'd encourage you to get to know her story a little and, uh, and be encouraged by that. New Life, thank you so much for inviting us to be here as a part of your weekend activities. What an honor. And we're going to continue to lift you up and minister uh, alongside of you for the years to come. And so church family, go on mission. Go on point. Filled with the Holy Spirit, knowing that there is work to be done to the farthest ends of the globe and right here at home.
Now go in His power and His might in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen and amen. Church family, a reminder, lunch in the White Garage in a few moments, as well as ice cream and all the goodies that go with it. Bouncy houses for the kids and games over there. And then tours over at the, uh, the West Doors at any point this afternoon. God bless you. Have a great, great rest of the day. <laughs>